Welcome everybody to Transfer Weekly, your newest podcast at Feeder Series for keeping up to speed with all the transfers going on in Formula 2, Formula 3, Freca, and beyond. I'm your interim host, Michael McClure, once again substituting for Chris McCarthy, who's working at the virtual 24 Hours of Le Mans this weekend. And this week to talk through all the transfers, we're welcoming back our Freca French F4 and Formula Winter Series editor and new head of content, Percy Wolf. And we've got a special guest for you, a voice that you may be familiar with, it's FIA Formula 3 commentator Harry Benjamin joining us for the first time on the show. And we begin this week's episode of Transfer Weekly with a new Formula 2 signing, and that is Roman Steinek at Trident. The Czech driver was a title contender with the team in Formula 3 last year, but ultimately fell short. Harry, as he finally steps up to F2 after three F3 seasons, what will he be capable of? Well, I'm really excited to see uh, he's ha- made that step up. I'm, I'm grateful for him um, to have gotten that shot. I just remember reading and hearing him talk at the start of Formula 3 last year, how this was it for him and his career. He had to do well in Formula 3 in 2022 to to make it go. And to be in title contention right to the very end uh, was no mean feat, given how competitive Formula 3 was. So the step up to Formula 2, um, I think uh, it's going to be a, a tough order, but he's proven that he can fight already with the likes of, of Martins, of, of Behrman, uh, Maloney, who are all stepping up with him it's a really exciting f2 grid full of rookies um who have shown that they can fight tooth and nail together and be competitive so i think roman uh, should be in for a good year but again he he seems like one of those drivers that's always having to fight for it a little bit so uh i will watch his season with uh with intrigue and and hope for the best because i mean he's a quick peddler that's for sure yeah, absolutely. And there were, well, not one, but two drivers named Roman at Trident in 2022, and both of them will continue with the Italian team next year. The other one is, of course, Polish-British driver Roman Belinsky, who will line up for his second season in Freca after taking one podium and two rookie wins in 2022. Percy, what can we expect from him in 2023? Yeah, B- Bilinski staying with Trident was an an- announcement that was expected for several months already as Trident really wanted to stick with him for a second season. Uh, last year was the first year of Trident in Freke and they had three rookie drivers all discovering the car. And despite this, they managed to fight for podiums and even got the rookie title with Leonardo Fornaoli. Uh, Trident has progressed and now wants some some stability to build up on their momentum and, and keep on improving. Now, Bilinski finished 18 of 3K last year with two points finished that includes a podium and another rain in Hungary. That doesn't seem impressive, but let's not forget that Bilinski had to learn the car, but also all the European tracks as he had only been racing in Great Britain before, which can easily explain why he struggled more compared to his teammates Tramnitz and Fornaoli. Uh, All the, the winter testing has shown that Bilinski is still progressing now, it's hard to know if he will be able to offer Trident their first win in Freke because I think this has to be the goal of the whole team now. He's the first driver announced by Trident for 2023 and drivers alongside him will either be rookies or drivers discovering the team. So he now has to take the the leadership of the team and to bring them to new heights. We mentioned a lot of really interesting things there about Trident being a newer team and Bilinski sort of becoming their team leader heading into 2023. We know there's a lot of fans in Poland who are rooting for him. And on the topic of drivers with large national fan bases, perhaps few drivers in Feeder Series are more closely followed than Franco Colapinto, who has just been announced at MP Motorsport in F3 and at the Williams Driver Academy. Harry, Franco had a very impressive 2022 claiming pole position on Van Amersfoort's debut weekend. Could he be a title contender in 2023? I think so, you know. He was honestly my driver of the year last year. I was just so amazed by what he brought to Formula 3, not just the talent, but also, as you say, he's got that huge Argentinian support and the ca- the character that he is as well. Everyone loves a bit of Franco talent, character. He's got the whole of Argentina behind him. Um, and I really think now he has a, a genuine shot at... at- becoming a or getting more involved with formula one because he's now been signed by the williams driver academy you just look at their roster you know chadwick sergeant o'sullivan you know you go back to dan tickton not too long ago alex lynn a few years ago now a lots of drivers have gone through that program and yeah not all have made it into the the main seats but it certainly gives you a a much better chance than obviously not having that uh, f1 team association i always found it really interesting as well that franco has sort of done a bit of 
sports car racing in tandem with his single seater rise, which I actually think has really benefited him as well. I remember back in Bahrain last year, he was already handling that F3 car almost like it was a rally car. He was pushing it to the absolute max. And that sports car experience, I think, is really going to help him as he steps up to Formula 2 as well. Not only has he got the Williams F1 connection now, but he's already worked uh, alongside uh, affiliated drivers and established drivers like Nick DeVries as his teammate in in sports car racing. So um, he's got an amazing uh, bank of experience and knowledge to draw on on top of that clearly outright talent and pace. I mean, bar the first two races of F3 last year with VAR, Franco Colapinto, my word, like a round of applause. So I am so excited to see what he can do in Formula 2 next year or this year even. I'm still in 2022. Aren't we all still a bit in 2022? Absolutely, Harry. Well, another new Driver Academy signing has a surname that you might recognize, and that's Sebastian Montoya, who's charting his own path up the feeder series ladder. The son of Juan Pablo Montoya is going to the Red Bull Junior team for 2023 after being signed as a Red Bull athlete in July. Percy, just how big is this move for the future? Yeah, the, the, the case of Sebastian Montoya is really interesting because before 2022, I didn't specially read him. Like, he got a lot of podiums in Italian F4, but it was not spectacular. Uh, and, but everything changed when he raced in uh, Formula Regional Asia during the winter. In just three rounds, despite discovering the car, the tracks, he scored all three pole positions and managed two feature race wins against drivers like Leclerc, Ajar, Mini, etc., that was really, really impressive. And the first half of, of his freaky season was really strong too, with five rookie wins. And yeah, he was cruising to, to this rookie title. And then he was signed at mid-season point by, uh, as a Red Bull athlete. And he kind of disappeared of the top 10. It was like he was really overwhelmed by this signing. That was really weird to see. And uh, finally, he eventually only finished 13th. So that's it. A bit of a pity, but however, we must talk about his other big achievement of the year, which was his one-off in FIF3 at Zandvoort with Campos, uh, where he shined the whole weekend, being constantly in the top eight with this team that had a difficult season. So now I really want to see what he will do in a more stable situation with him being fully part of Red Bull. And I expect him to fight for the title in Formula Regional Middle East this winter with high tech before probably joining F3 with the same team. Yeah, well, Montoya is one of a number of drivers that we're seeing in F2 and F3, potentially for this coming year, who are racing in the Formula Regional Middle East Championship over the winter to gain more experience. Earlier in the show, we talked about Franco Colapinto, who's moved from Van Amersfoort to MP for F3 for 2023. One of his 2022 rivals will be moving in the opposite direction, and it's Caio Collet. Harry, Caio broke his duck with two sprint race wins and a pole at Spa this year, but he couldn't mount that title challenge that many expected. At Van Amersfoort with a younger team, do you think he can finally do it? Ah, well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? I don't know. Is this the honest answer? I hope he does. And you know, you say there he had a he had a a step up in terms of being able to get onto the top step of the rostrum and 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 have a couple of podiums to his name in F three. But you know, although he he only really finished one place higher in the standings in twenty twenty two, and he actually scored less points i think so but then you say oh well, he had a win and you know so he clearly did have a step up but yeah he has a mixture of bad luck and and but the thing with kai is and, and maybe he will find this with van amersfoort he really struggles i think to find that consistency he has these flashes of utter brilliance with uh, these uh, that gets him uh, up and winning the race or battling in the top five but that doesn't last very long and then suddenly you know he's got a string of lackluster results and in f3 yeah it's easy to do that but what stands a driver out in formula 3 in particular is that ability to be able to be consistent and that is at the moment making or breaking careers at this level and this is kaya's last chance but van amersfoort showed last year what they can do at least with two out of the three of their cars uh, certainly with franco that you know, they may have been a new team last year, but they are not new to the feeder series single seater world. They know how to run and operate at a high level. So uh, I hope Kyle can can lead that team. He really should be able to to lead that team for, for next year. Uh, whether he continues on with the Alpine relationship, I think is still yet to be uh, fully decided, but I hope uh, they back him for one more year. But at the moment, the results haven't quite been, I think, where either Kaya or Alpine or indeed uh, where the, the team he's raced for wants them to be. 
Well, going back to Van Amersfoort and lining up along Colet and Tommy Smith is another third-year FIA F3 driver in Rafael Villa Gomez, one of several 2023 F3 drivers who've raced in Formula Regional Middle East this past weekend. Harry, Villa Gomez made some big steps from 2021 to 2022. What kind of more progress can we expect from him in 2023? Well, oh, if they were big steps, uh, unfortunately, I don't think they were quite shown on the results side. Maybe big steps from within himself, but unfortunately for for Rafael, I think it's a, it's a it's got to be a make or break season. I mean, one point scoring position, ninth place in his second year in a team that that was capable of doing more. Uh, I you know I, is is worrying. Um, I it's not good enough really i mean i hate saying that because i'm not a driver so what do i know but you know when you look at colapinto and and ushijima and it, maybe it's better to sort of look at ushijima perhaps with less experience compared to colapinto I know it's hard to gauge it but even ushijima was able to get onto the podium and, and showed some flashes of brilliance whereas i don't think villa gomez really had that wow moment at all during the year which is a shame because i commentated on him in in euro formula open and and he was pretty pacey in that and at the sharp end so he he is fast and he can uh, get that speed and he's got a brilliant relationship clearly with van Aersfoort racing because he was with them in the euro formula made the move to formula three with them as well so uh, another year of consistency uh, his first year with hwa obviously that that team was didn't quite get things together for any of their drivers really um, on a consistent basis. So a second year with VAR, let's see what holds for Rafa. I think he's a fast driver, but he needs to show more than a ninth place in a whole season of Formula 3. Yeah, for sure there'll be a lot of expectation for him to step up and finally get into consistent points finishes, maybe even a podium here or there. Mm -hmm. But one driver who's leaving the Van Amers for fold for 2023 is Levent Areves, who will be making the move to Arden and Freca. Percy Reves didn't score any points in 2022, and VAR also considerably outscored Arden. Is this a backward step, or can this change of scenery help the Hungarian driver break his point stock? It's hard to tell because, yeah, as you said, it will be his sophomore year in Freke. He will be switching from Von Amersfoort to Arden. He has had a complicated rookie year, and he struggled against his teammates of the court and Dufek that collected wins, podiums, etc., while he didn't score points. So, of course, it doesn't look good. But he showed some progress during postseason testing. He was sometimes fighting the top 10, top 8, etc., with Arden. So, hopefully, now he can catch up the guys in France. I think it's a... It's a step he, he needs to do maybe in a in a smaller team that will be more capable of developing him. It's a bet. It's a bet that he has to do to 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 progress. Well, sticking with Freca, we have another new signing announced over the weekend, and that's Ikar Oikarinen at KIC Motorsport. Oikarinen is a known face in Finnish motorsport, but this is his first foray into wider European racing. Percy, how do you reckon he'll adapt? So yeah, Oikarinen was pretty unknown to me and I think to a lot of people, but it will be his first season in an FIA certified series. He was runner up of the local Formula Academy Finland, which is a very little championship that still uses first generation F4 cars. And he has been testing a lot with KIC during the winter that that loves to have some local Finnish drivers in the squad to uh, uh, to develop to de to develop young Finnish talents. So let's see how it turns out. He was quite far behind in testing, but it was quite expected given his lack of experience. Now the most important will be to see how much and how quickly he can progress. Yeah, for sure. We say that Oik Karunen is maybe not as well-known. One of the most well-known drivers in feeder series is Juan Manuel Correa. We've already spoken about his transfer to Van Amersfoort in Formula 2, but last week he also announced that he would be adding another campaign to his schedule with feeder series powerhouse Prima in the World Endurance Championship. Harry, Correa's already raced with Prima and ELMS this year. How challenging will this next step up be? I think it will be challenging, but I, I think clearly Correa is uh, is clearly feeling like he can do it. And I think he's he's gone about it in the right way as well. He sort of dipped his toe in a little bit last year doing, uh, I think it was two rounds, wasn't it, in uh, ELMS with, with Prima. Um, and what did he get out of that? He got a podium and a win. So clearly it's uh, it's something that clicked quite well uh, for, for James and, and to be able to to step up to to um, the World Endurance Championship and, and include uh, he's not doing the entire season but to include the 24 hour Le Mans in that and I believe he might be doing the 24 hour to Daytona in a couple of weekends as well um, so you know he's clearly got a, a penchant for for sports car racing and it's clearly a viable avenue for him as well and also to get that Formula Two chance again I mean what a story we we say it every single time don't we you know 
the comeback story of Juan Manuel Correa is absolutely inspirational. I spoke to him last year quite in depth, and just to hear his story, you know, it's still not easy. You know, last year he had to miss rounds due to injuries and complications, so it's still not a, a finished article for him. So to be able to be competing at LMP2 level and F2 level in the same year is going to be a mighty challenge for him, um, but one that will, uh, I think, reap huge rewards for him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Correa, what a, what a great story that is. And while he's still got a foot in the door in single seaters, another driver is making a more permanent pivot away. After a tough 2022 season in Formula 2 that ended one round early, Australia's Callan Williams will be switching to the GT World Challenge Europe with WRT, who've also switched to BMW after being with Audi for more than a decade. Percy, is this a well-timed career decision for Callan? Yeah, sure. I clearly think that's the best thing that could ha that could happen to his career. WRT is probably one of the most successful GT teams from the last decade, although it always was with Audi, and now WRT will be with BMW. Uh, by joining the, this team as Korea with Prema in LMP2, there is maybe a way to join a big constructor in hypercar category at the 24 hours of Le Mans with maybe BMW. Kellen Williams was never promised to F1 success, but he definitely has shown some talent. He won Australian F3 in 2017, but then struggled a little to adapt to European racing. Uh, he stood on the FIA F3 podium in 2021 with a Gen Zer, which is pretty remarkable. He, he then scored five points in F2 last year, but he was far to be nowhere. He was in the midfield fighting with others. He he was not this backmarker we laugh about because he always crashes or is one lamp behind the others. Uh, Williams is a good driver, a solid driver, but he will now face a big challenge with GT. This is the launch of his professional career, so now let's wish him good luck. Yeah, and we see a lot of drivers these days making that switch earlier and earlier. Williams doing so a little bit later in his career. He's 22 years old at the moment, um, but we do wish him luck as he steps away from feeder series. Right, and that's all we've got for episode seven. Thank you so much to Percy and Harry for joining us for Transfer Weekly and offering your commentary. I'm sure it's not the last we'll hear of them talking about these drivers. Thank you to our newly appointed head of broadcasting, Jim Kimberly, for working his magic on the other side of the world, and to Chris McCarthy for giving me the reins once again. If you've enjoyed the show, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Feeder Series YouTube channel, and we'll see you again next week for episode eight of Transfer Weekly. Mm -hmm.